Welcome everyone to our Facebook uh, viewers and to our online conference call listeners. We welcome you to Easter Sunday here at Greater yeah. Holy Temple. Yeah. And we are planning to have a wonderful time in the Lord on today. We are going to have great worship and great word of God on today. So again, give God all of your praise and honor and glory. We know this is the day that Jesus, that we celebrate the day that Jesus rose from the grave. And I thank God that we are serving a Savior that has risen from the grave. He is not buried somewhere, but he has risen. And we praise God for this glorious day on today. Because Jesus is alive, we have hope. Yes. Let's go have church and thank God for this Resurrection Sunday. Let's go in right now and have some church. All God right. bless you. approaching and the chief priests and the teachers of the law were looking for some way to get rid of Jesus for they were afraid of people then Satan entered Judas called Iscariot one of the twelve and Judas went to the chief priests and the officers of the temple guard and discussed with them how he might betray Jesus. They were delighted and agreed to give him money. He consented and marched for an opportunity to hand Jesus over to them when no crowd was present. But you are to not be like that. Instead, the greatest among you should be like the youngest, and the one who rules like the one who serves. But who is the greater, the one who is at the table or the one who serves? It is not one who is at the table, but I, hang, but I am among you as one who serves. You are those who have stood by me in my trials, and I confirm on you a kingdom. This is my Father conferred one on me, so that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom and sit on my throne, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Simon, Simon. Satan has asked to see all of you up in the But I have prayed for you, son, that your face may not fail. And when you have thrown back, sing to the water. But he replied, Lord, I am ready to go with you to prison and to death. Jesus answered, I tell you, Peter, before the rooster crows today, you will deny me three times, but you know. Then Jesus asked him, When I send you without purse, bag or sandals. Did you lack anything? Nothing, I answered. He said to them, but now if you have a purse, take it, and I'll show that. And if you don't have a sword, sell your cloak and buy one. It is written, and he was numbered with the transgressions. And I tell you, that this must be fulfilled in you. Yes, what is written about me is reaching its fulfillment. The disciples said, See, Lord, here are two swords. That's not, he replied. While he was still speaking, a crowd came up, and the man who was called Judas, one of the twelve, was leading them. He approached Jesus to kiss him, but Jesus asked him, Judas, are you the one betraying the son of the man with the kiss? When Jesus' followers saw what was going to happen, they said, Lord, should we strike him with our swords? And one of them struck the servants of the high priest, cutting off his right ear. But Jesus answered, No more of this. And he touched the man's ear and healed him. Then Jesus said unto the chief priests and the officers of the temple's guard and the elders who had come before him, I am leading a rebellion that you have come with swords and clubs. Every day I was with you in the temple and you did not lay a hand on me. But this is your hour when darkness reigns. Pilate called together the chief priests, the rulers, and the people, and said to them, You brought me this man as one who was inciting the people to rebellion. I have examined him in your presence and have found no basis 
for your charges against him. Neither has Herod, for he sent him back to us. As you can see, he has done nothing to deserve death. Therefore, I will punish him and then re release him. Pilate wanted them to release Jesus. He addressed them again, but they kept shouting, Crucify! 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 Then on the third shout, he said unto them, Why? What has he done wrong? I found I have found no ground for him to get the death penalty. Then, therefore, I will have him whipped and then released. And it was about the sixth hour, and there was a darkness over all the earth until the ninth hour. And the sun was darkened, and the veil of the temple was rent in the midst. And when Jesus had cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And having thus, he gave up the ghost. Now when the centurion saw what was done, he, he glorified God, saying, Certainly this was a righteous man. And all the people that came together to that sight, beholding the things which were done, smote their breasts and returned. And all his acquaintance and the women that followed him from Galilee stood afar off beholding their things. Saying that the Son of Man must be delivered up into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and the third day rise again. And they remembered his words and returned from the, the tomb and told all these things to the eleven and to all the rest. It was Mary Magdalene, John, and Mary, the mother of James, and the others with them, who told this to the apostles. But they did not believe the woman, because their words seemed to them like nonsense. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb, bending over. He saw the stripes of linen lying by themselves, and he went away, wondering to himself what had happened. Jesus lives. Jesus lives. 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 See the <laughs> Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and frightened, thinking they saw a ghost. He said, he said to them, why are you troubled and why do, why do doubts rise in your minds? Look at, look at my hands and my feet. It is I myself. Touch me, touch me and see a ghost. The, a ghost does not have flesh and bones. When he had said to this, he showed them his hands and feet, and while they were still, did not believe it because of joy and amazement, he asked them, Do you have anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate in their presence. He said to them, this is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, prophets, and the Psalms. Jesus lives yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus lives!
bless you saints of God. Happy Easter. Happy Resurrection Sunday. Come on, give God some praise for Resurrection Sunday on this morning. We thank God for you. I want to thank God for the Greater Holy Temple Youth Department. Thank you all so much for our youth sharing their presentations with us on this Resurrection Sunday. Happy Easter, Greater Holy Temple Youth. Thank you, viewers. I want to thank the viewers as well as those that's on conference call, Facebook, YouTube, on our website. Thank you so much for being with us on this Resurrection Sunday. This is something a little different for us. I'm used to the pews being filled and people looking at me and, and things like that. And we praising and worshiping God together. But you know what? I thank God for technology that we're here today on this beautiful Sunday celebrating our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ being resurrected from the dead just as he said he would. Listen, what I want to do is go into prayer and then we're going to go right into the word of God. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you on this morning. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your kindness. We thank you for this Resurrection Sunday, this Easter day. We thank you, oh God, for all that you have done for us, how you suffered how you bled and how you died on the cross for our sins. And then on that third day, you rose again. And we thank you, oh God, that we have hope in you. We thank you, oh God, for blessing us to be together uh, through our various technologies on today. Lord, as we come to lift you up, as we come to praise you, we come to magnify you, and we come to glorify your name. Lord, we just thank you today. Lord, we ask you to heal the sick, save the soul, reclaim the backslider in the name of Jesus. Those that are dealing with the coronavirus, Lord, that you would heal today, that you would deliver, oh God. Those that's on the front line, that you would bless them and protect them. Those workers that's uh, going to and from, even delivering food and things like that, that you would bless them, oh God, in the name of Jesus. And Lord, have your way. Have your way, oh God, and we give you all the glory, and we give you all the praise. Bless the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, 
Lord, let it be acceptable in thy sight. You are my strength and you are my redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Let all God's people say together, amen. God bless you on this morning. We're going to go right to the word of God. Amen. And we're going to give you what God has given me to give to you on this Easter Sunday, this Resurrection Sunday, as we celebrate and commemorate, amen, Jesus Christ and what he has done for us, amen, how he suffered and bled and died and rose again. This is meaningful for our faith and the fact that he did it just for you. We thank God. Listen, let us turn to the Bible on today, to the Word of God, in the book of Luke, the 24th chapter. And I love to read in your hearing just a few verses, starting at verse number 19. Luke 24 and 19. All right, let us read that. Luke 24 and 19. I'm going to go down to about the 24th uh, verse. And he said unto them, What things? And they said unto him concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet, mighty indeed, and word before God and all the people, and how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and have crucified him. But we trusted that it had been he which should have redeemed Israel. And besides all this, today, somebody say today, today is the third day since these things were done. Yea, and, and certain women also of our company made us astonished, which were early at the sepulcher. And when they found not his body, they came, saying, that they have also seen a vision of angels, which said that he was alive. And certain of them, which were with us, went to the sepulcher and found it even so as the women had said, but him they saw not. May the Lord have a blessing to the reading and hearing of his word. I love to read. I uh, have a short topic for you on today. Because Jesus lives, I have hope. Come on, say that with your neighbor at home. I know you're with your family, and I thank God for your family and everybody being together on this Resurrection Sunday. Let's say the topic together. Because Jesus lives, I have hope. We thank God for hope today. Where is the hope? In this world today, like today, in a time like today, people need hope. Our Surgeon General uh, of the United States of America is saying that even over the next two weeks that this is a, like a Pearl Harbor to us. It's going to be the worst two weeks ever. More people are going to die, and, and we don't know what to do. We don't know where to go. Uh, we need a Savior. We need a Deliverer. We need to put our hope in Jesus. We need hope in a time like this, something to look forward to. It seems sometimes that our world has been shattered over this coronavirus. But I'm here to tell you, sickness just didn't come with the coronavirus. Amen. People have been dying long before the coronavirus got here. People have the flu and they have cancer and they have diabetes and high blood pressure, heart attack. Those things have been going on long before, amen, the coronavirus got here. And we still, in all of this, we need to put our hope in Jesus. Put our trust in Jesus. Some people say, I can't see a change. I can't see the end. Amen. I thank God for Jesus because he lives. I can see a brighter day. I have hope on today. Let's define this, this hope just for a minute. In summary, hope is the confident expectations, the sure certainty that what God, somebody say God, God has promised in the word or his word is true, has occurred and or will 
uh, accordance with God's sure word will come to pass. I'm here to tell you, if God said it, it will come to pass. God is not like us. We make promises all day long and all week long, all month long. But if God said it, it's going to come to pass. It's going to come true. Why? Because I, worded, I, I read it in the word of God. Look at Numbers, the 23rd chapter, the 19th verse. The word of God said, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken it and shall he not make it good? If God said it, he going to make it good. If he said it, it's going to come to pass. Somebody give God a hand praise on this morning. Look at Romans, the 8th chapter, 24 verse. It says, for we are saved by hope. Somebody say hope. But hope that is seen is not hope. For what, it, what a man seeth, why do he yet hope for? If I see it, what I need to hope for for? But if we hope for that what we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. Amen. What is hope? We have this great expectation, this confident expectation that God will do it. He said he will. He said he would. And it's going to come to pass. We thank God uh, uh, for Jesus on today and this wonderful Sunday. I'm going to go right to the scriptures. However, I want to give you just a little bit of history. I want to give you a little bit of what's going on in these particular scriptures because the crucifixion is already over. <laughs> the, 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 the court hearings, it's already over. The death has already occurred, and these men are devastated. These two men are devastated. Their dreams is dashed. These men are shocked. They are perplexed. They, they don't know what to do, and they begin to walk away. Uh, but it's not over. The women have found the grave empty and said, no doubt, uh, the angels told them that Jesus lives. He's not here. Even to the fact of why do you look for uh, uh, the person that's alive amongst the dead? Jesus has already, amen, risen. But they were perplexed. They were all over the place. They were sad. And we're going to look into that. And we're going to go into this story right quick. And we're going to wrap it up. But it says, and behold. I'm down at the 13th verse. I want to back up to the 13th verse. It says, Behold, two of them went the same day to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem, about three score and furlongs, which was not far from Jerusalem, not far from the grave. But they left the grave. They left the site. They left the house. And they talked together all these things which had happened. They were talking about how Jesus got railroaded in court. They were talking about uh, the, 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 the beating or the whooping that he received, the lashes that he received. They were talking about the whole thing. And it came to pass that while they communed together, while these two men communed together, while they were together, while they were walking uh, along the roadside, the dusty roadside, the Bible says, and reasoned amongst themselves, Jesus himself draw nigh to them. He came upon them and went with them. But their eyes were open that they should not know him. So they didn't know who this man was. They couldn't figure out who this man was. And he said to them, Jesus said to them, what manner of communication are these that ye have one to another as you walk and you are sad? Here you are walking together and you're sad, you're, you're perplexed, you're distressed, you, you look like you ain't got no hope at all. You look hopeless. What is this conversation? And one of them, whose name was Cleophas, answer said unto him, art thou only a stranger? In Jerusalem, hast thou not known the things which have come to pass in these days? Well, you, you don't know what's going on. Have you not heard about it? Have you not seen it? All the people knew that, hey amen, what's going on? Where do you come from? That's what they were saying to Jesus. And Jesus responded. He said to them, what things? And they said unto him concerning Jesus of Nazareth. Somebody say Jesus. 
which was a prophet, mighty indeed what they call him. He was mighty indeed. He was a prophet is what they were saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesus was healing the sick and he was giving sight to the blind. He was opening up ears of the deaf. He was casting out devils and casting out demons. He even rose uh, uh, Lazarus from the dead. He did some mighty deeds and words before God and all the people. He preached with authority. He talked with authority the word of God. And the men said, how the chief priests, how the chief priests, how, how the main church folk came to him and, 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 and the rulers delivered him to be condemned to death. They telling Jesus, and you know what? They telling Jesus he was crucified. They said he was crucified. But we trusted, is what they said. They said we trusted that it had been he which should have redeemed Israel. We, we were looking for another system. We, we've been up under the Romans long enough. We didn't pay taxes long enough. We've been up under their political system long enough. And we were looking for this kind of redeemer. And besides all of that, all he, all that this Jesus of Nazareth went through, all that came to pass, you know what, you know what? This is the third day since these things were done. So this happened three days ago. And yay, we, let me tell you about the women. The, the women early in the morning, <laughs> these women went down to the grave site. <laughs> they had their spices and they had their oils to prepare the body. <laughs> it was Mary Magdalene. <laughs> it was Joanna uh, and Mary, the, the mother of James, and some other women. And they were astonished. As they went early in the morning to the sepulcher, <laughs> and when they found not his body, they, they came back to us, <laughs> saying that, uh, uh, that, that they had seen a vision of angels. And the angels told them that he is not here, but he is alive. And that Jesus is alive. And the men, they, they, I'm paraphrasing, they got up. Uh, they sailed together and they ran out. Peter and some of the others, they ran out to the sepulcher and they found out what the women said was true. That Jesus was not there. Jesus was gone. The stone was rolled away. And, and, and Jesus said, they saw, they said that the men say, we saw him not. But in that 25th verse, Jesus came back. Oh, Jesus came back. Jesus said, he said, then he said unto them, O fools, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Jesus called them fools, said, listen here. He even goes down, say, all the way from Moses and all the other prophets had talked to you, had talked and had talked and had prophesied. He expounded in all the scripture concerning Jesus. All that was going on, they had, the prophets had revealed to them. All that was going to happen, the prophets revealed to him. And Jesus called them fools and said, whoa, whoa, why your heart is slow to believe all these things? Huh. Jesus, in essence, was letting them know, uh, I could just go to Isaiah, the 53rd chapter, huh, where it says that Jesus, huh, he bore our griefs. Huh. Had you not heard from the prophets huh, how the Lord would bear our griefs, huh, how he would carry our sorrows, huh, how he was smitten of God and how he was afflicted. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. And with his stripes we are healed. Every one of those stripes we have healed. And brothers, you tell me you haven't heard this. You don't know what's going on. All our sins were upon him. He was afflicted. He was oppressed. And you know what? He opened not his mouth. The prophet's been saying it down through the years. He was like sheep going to the slaughter. But the Lord, he took it all. The prophet had been telling them what's going on or what's going to happen. And you just didn't believe it. Do you not know there's people right now that don't believe in the resurrection? 
There's people right now don't believe that Jesus rose from the grave. They don't believe that he's alive right now today. And that's why their hope is gone. You see people jumping off of bridges and jumping off of this. And the suicide rate is getting higher and higher. People have lost hope. But we need, we need to fix our eyes on the Lord. And as they begin to walk, I'm back to the Bibles here. I'm paraphrasing. As they continue to walk, as they continue to talk, the Bible says that the men constrained him. They wanted Jesus to walk with him and continue to talk with them. Just like today, we need to walk with the Lord. We need to talk with the Lord. Lord, I want to talk to you. And Lord, I need you to talk to me. Let's have a little talk with Jesus and tell him all about our troubles. He will hear us say yes. Say yes. And the Bible says in verse 31 of this 24th chapter, their eyes were open and they knew him and he vanished. I don't have a lot of time, but by the end of this particular chapter, the chapter number 24, by the end of the road, Jesus had ate with them. He had showed them the nail scars. Jesus had rose up, told them, go down to Jerusalem and be endowed with power. That power is the Holy Ghost. Say yeah. And the angels took him on up in the glory. Say yes. Because he lives, I have hope. I'm getting ready to close. Say yes. I read in the word of God. I read in the Bible in 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, about that 17th verse, the word of the Lord says, and if Christ not be risen, your faith is in vain. Yet are ye in your sins, oh Lord. Somebody got to believe the Lord. If we don't believe that Christ rose from the dead, we still in our sins. Yes, but I'm here to tell you on this Easter morning, on this Resurrection Sunday, the Word of God, and I'm paraphrasing that Christ He rose from the grave. In First Corinthians, He has victory in his hands. Oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, brave, where is thy victory? The Lord, he has the victory. Thank God, thank to be the God who give us the victory. The devil thought he had him when he was on the cross. The devil thought he had him when the blood came streaming down. The devil thought he had him when they took him off the cross and they put him in the grave. The devil thought he had him when he rolled a stone in front of the grave. But yeah, on the third day, on that resurrection Sunday, there was a quaking going on. There was a shaking going on. And the Lord rose up out of that grave with victory in his hands. Say, yeah, let us know in these scriptures. Then they who also fall asleep in Christ our perish if we don't believe the resurrection. If in this life that only we have hope, in Christ, 
just as these men here, Cleopas uh, and his friends, uh, they only had the hope uh, in Christ uh, while he was there, uh, while he walked the roads uh, of Jericho uh, and Jerusalem, uh, while he walked the roads uh, of Caesarea. Uh, they only saw uh, what was before them. Uh, and so when Jesus died, uh, their hope was gone. Uh, but I hope uh, it's in the resurrection. Uh, say yeah. Uh, put your hands together and give him praise. Uh, it says if your hope is only in that, uh, we are all men, uh, most miserable uh, brothers uh, and my sisters. Uh, if you're miserable, uh, you're sad, uh, you're sorrowful, uh, you're depressed, uh, you're dejected, uh, you're downcasted, uh, you're downhearted. You're dismal, you're wretched. In other words, you're in a bad shape. But believe the whole road that the Lord, he suffered, he bled, he died, and he rose on this resurrection day with victory in his hands. And thank be to God, he give us up the victory. Where is your hope? Where is your hope? Where is your confidence? Where is your trust? Where is your faith? Yeah, because Jesus lived, I can face tomorrow because he lives. I have hope because he lives. I have salvation because he lives. I receive the gift of the Holy Ghost because he lives. I have my healing because he lives. I have the victory because he lives. Say yeah. Say yeah. I have hope. You say, brother preacher, how do you know that the Lord lives? Because he lives in me. He lives in me. He came into my heart and he saved me. Fill me with the Holy Ghost. And I say thank you. And I live every day of my life for the Lord because he lives. I have hope in him. Come on, let's give him some praise. Let's give him some glory. Yes. I thank God for the Lord rising on this resurrection Sunday. Lord, we thank you today and we praise you. Father God, we thank you and we praise you and we bless your name. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your word. If there's somebody that is there viewing us, hearing us on the conference call, I want to say your hope it's in Jesus. Jesus got up out that grave. He yet still live. And he yet is still saving. He's yet delivering. He's yet reclaiming the backslider. If you're sick in your body, say, I need prayer. You're sick in your body. God is a healer. Amen. If something's going on in the mind, I, I, feeling depressed. You say, I feel depressed. I feel sad. I need some joy. The joy of the Lord is your strength. We taking everything back to the Lord. All roads lead to Jesus Christ. And listen, you need the Lord in your life. You need him to heal you. You need him to deliver. You need him to save you. You need the Lord. Now is the time. If you want to be saved, you want to give your heart to the Lord. I'm going to ask you to say these short sentences. All that's within you. With all sincerity. Say, Lord, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you suffered, that you bled, 
and you died on the cross for my sins. Forgive me, oh God, of all my sins. Forgive me of all that I have done wrong. Come into my heart and save me, Lord. Save me, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. If you're sick, amen, hold them hands up. Say, Lord, I know that you're a healer. Lord, touch bodies on today. Touch that high blood pressure, that low blood pressure. Touch from the top of the head to the soles of the feet, from the inside to the outside. Every ink, every pain, we rebuke it right now in the name of Jesus. Jesus, you are a healer. Jesus, you are a deliverer. Jesus, you're the one that can set free. You can heal the body. You can heal the mind. And we thank you, oh God. And we bless your name. Somebody say, thank you, Lord. Somebody say, thank you, Lord. Somebody give God some praise and tell him thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And God bless you. Just before we go into Holy Communion, I do want to remind you on this Easter Sunday, amen, on this Resurrection Sunday, please sow a seed into the greater Holy Temple ministry. Whatever you can do to be a blessing to this ministry. Amen. I just believe in my heart if everybody would just give us $15, that would be just wonderful. That would be a wonderful seed. If you're not able to give $15, give the very best that you can. And I know that the Lord will bless you. You can give uh, one of the three ways. You can give online. You can also text to give or you can mail your gift, your seed offering in. God bless you. God bless you, saints of God. We thank God for you. Thank God for you to stand with us. This is our holy communion time. Time that we take out, amen, to have holy communion. And uh, we want you to join in with us at home. We want to thank you for being uh, viewing us at home as well as the conference call at home. So let us begin our Holy Communion service, a time that we uh, remember what the Lord has done for us. So let us go to our Holy Communion scriptures at this time. We're going to go to 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter, starting at the 23rd verse. We're going to go 1 Corinthians 11, 23 through 34. Going to ask you to join in with us at home. If you're at home, going to ask that you open up to the word of God. And let us read that all together on today, this beautiful Resurrection Sunday. So let us start. 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter and 23rd verse. It says, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup. And when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, who shall ever eat of this bread and drink of this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, tarry one for another. And if any man hunger, let him eat at home, that ye come not together unto condemnation, and the rest will I set in order when I come. May the Lord have a blessing to the hearing and doing of his words.
Amen. Thank you. We are going to have our Holy Communion prayer. If you will bow your heads with us. Gracious Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you on today. Thank you for this Easter Sunday, this Resurrection Sunday. Thank you for this opportunity to have Holy Communion. As we do this in remembrance of what you have done for us. And Lord, we ask you to bless it. Bless the bread that's being taken. Bless the juice that's being taken. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray and we thank you, O oh God. Amen. getting prepared to consume the bread the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that was broken for you take and eat prepared to consume the juice. This is grape juice, a representation of wine. This is for the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that was shed for thee. Drink thee all of it. God bless you, saints. That concludes our Holy Communion Resurrection Sunday. God bless you, and thank you so very much. I know it was the blood.
I miss you, my little pastor. He misses you as well. We, we really miss you. I hope, we hope that you enjoy the services on today. God bless you. And thank you so much for viewing with us and being with us. We love you all and can't wait to get together one more time. God bless you. And we have great expectations. Love you. Love you.